Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we have an infinite sum of complex numbers. And the question is, go away, Justin. The question is, does it converge or diverge? We're going to use what's called the ratio test. So recall the ratio test for real numbers says if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, and you get L, one of three things can happen. One, if L is less than 1, we'll say the series converges. What a great marker. If L is bigger than 1, the series diverges. And if L is equal to 1, we have no info. So for complex series, it's almost the same, except instead of absolute value, we use something called the modulus. So what is the modulus? It's actually super, super easy. So if you have a complex number of the form x plus i y, the modulus of z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And what does this mean graphically? Well, if you think a complex number, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis, you can plot it as x plus iy, and the modulus just gives you the length of this vector here. So the modulus of z would be the length of the vector. Anyways, in this problem, we're going to determine if it converges or diverges. So let's go ahead and start by using the ratio test and uh, see what happens. Not a very good eraser. Go away, Justin! All right, so let's start by taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of this thing. So this, this is our a sub n, right? This is our a sub n. So first we have to compute a sub n plus 1. That means we have to replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. So this is going to be parentheses 1 plus i to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, just replacing all of the n's with n plus 1's, right? And this would be a sub n plus 1. Recall the formula for the ratio test is limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, right? So all we've written down so far is a sub n plus 1. We've replaced all of the n's with n plus 1's. Now we're dividing by a sub n. So what that means is basically we multiply by the reciprocal. We're just going to flip this. So times n factorial over, right, and then just this piece here, 1 plus i to the n. Beautiful stuff. Um, some stuff happens here, right? Some nice stuff happens. So first of all, this 1 plus i to the n plus 1 over 1 plus i to the n. Check this out. If you have 1 plus i to the n plus 1 over 1 plus i to the n, what happens is you can write this as 1 plus i to the n times 1 plus i over 1 plus i to the n, and the 1 plus i to the n's cancel, and so you just get 1 plus i, right? Because when you multiply these, you add the exponents, right? n plus 1 is n plus 1. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. So these go away. We just have uh, 1 plus i, so 1 plus i. What about the factorials? Well, n plus 1 factorial is the same thing as n plus 1, and then the next one would be n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, et cetera. So the rest of it is n factorial. So um, what's going to happen is we're going to have n factorial over n plus 1, n factorial. These cancel, so we get the limit as n goes to infinity. So n goes to infinity of uh, absolute value, or not absolute value, modulus, <laughs> 1 plus i over n plus 1. 1 plus i is a complex number. It is not going anywhere, right, when n goes to infinity. So as n gets really, 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 really big, you have 1 plus i over something getting really, 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 really big. So this gets really, really close to 0. That's less than 1. And so converges by the ratio test. And whenever we have um, convergence by the ratio test, we have absolute convergence, right? That means that this converges in absolute value, so it also converges in the regular sense. So it's a little bit stronger. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care.